So today I'm comparing the cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE versus the Galaxy S8. Now there's about three years difference between these phones, so how much have the camera technologies improved? Let's check out the hardware first. So both of these have a 12 megapixel main camera. The S20 also has a wide angle lens and it's also got a zoom lens. Both of them have got optical image stabilization on the main camera and both of them can record in 4K, which is good. I found that in good lighting, the S8 can produce some fairly comparable images and it keeps up with it. Where the S20 FE really excels is in the low light. And obviously this makes sense. It's got a far bigger sensor, almost double the size. So both these phones have got pretty similar aperture. I think it's f1.7, f1.8, and really the sensor size is the big difference. If you imagine water pouring through a hole, a hole is the size of the aperture. The sensor is the bucket at the bottom that you're trying to catch the water with. One of the buckets is twice as big as the other. This isn't just applicable at nighttime. You end up getting a higher dynamic range photo during the day, so you can see better in the highlights and also at the same time better in the shadows. So I'm not even really mentioning that the S20 also has a wide angle lens and a zoom lens on top. So you can't really compare these with the S8 because it doesn't even have them. Just remember that the S8 can only zoom electronically, so the quality is worse. You can really see on these extreme cases here. While the zoom lens on the S20 FE is useful, I tend to just zoom with my feet wherever possible and accept that a phone isn't really designed to take those sorts of photos. So yeah, going around at night with these two phones now, trying to take some photos. The S20 FE has got this night mode, so we'll see if that makes any difference. But I'm just kind of taking it out, pointing and shooting, like you would do with a real phone in a real situation. And while I don't actually mind the look of some of the S8 photos, it's undoubtable that the S20 FE produces better quality, which you can then, you know, alter or filter in post. So it's basically night time here, um, not even seven o'clock. That's depressing. Welcome to Scotland. And the S8 was kind of holding its own, but that night mode, it's real impressive on the S20. It does make a big difference. It's kind of stitching all those images together and uh, the bigger sensor size as well obviously helps. One other thing I noticed was that it sometimes takes a moment for the S20 FE just to recognize that it's taking a photo at night and switch over to night mode. Once you take a photo in night mode, you just need to keep your hand still for a few seconds while it does its HDR magic. Both of them have got this front facing camera here, which is 32 megapixels on the S20 FE and eight megapixels on the S8. I actually don't know, it's a huge amount of difference between the two and it's not really a camera that I use too often anyway. So here I've just got a little video comparison and you can tell that the S20 FE has better detail. If you look at things like the chalk marks on the wall, you can see them a lot more clearly. The colors are fairly different as well. The S8 looks a bit washed out in comparison to the S20 FE, which some people might say looks a little bit oversaturated. Um, personally, I quite like the look, but again, it's a little bit of preference. In the background with the light and the glare off the wall, you can tell that the S20 FE has better dynamic range again compared to the S8. See, the S20 FE is definitely a little bit larger. Now, it's something I noticed at first, after a week or so, I kind of just got used to it. I didn't really notice the difference anymore. It's definitely a little bit bulkier, but they both fit in my pocket just fine. And there's not a huge amount of difference realistically. One of the upsides of it is that when you'd go and watch videos, the screen's a little bit nicer to look at because it's just that little bit bigger. Speaking of watching videos, the S20's got two speakers in it. So it kind of gives you a stereo sound, whereas the S8 has just got the one speaker grill at the bottom here, which I occasionally block with my finger and then can't hear anything. Screen quality wise, I don't notice a huge amount of difference. When I'm playing videos side by sides on these phones, to the naked eye, they look pretty similar. I've got the S8 set at the highest quality, which is actually 1440p, and the S20 only goes up to 1080p. Now the S20 FE does have this higher refresh rate. It's kind of hard to show on a 30 frames per second YouTube video, but all of the animations or the scrolling feel much, much smoother. You can actually flick it down to the 60 hertz, which is the same as the S8, 
and it, everything loads just as quick. Like, don't get me wrong, this is just purely cosmetic. It makes things feel faster and look smoother, but actually the phone performs the same either way. And speaking of loading, the S20 is generally faster in pretty much every single way. Now, I've got the Geekbench scores here, which is kind of like this benchmark test that you can run on your phones, and it gives you some interesting scores. Um, but how does this really compare in real life? Well, the apps load a little bit faster, things process a little bit quicker. It's marginal, but it's there, you know. I have noticed that the S20 FE doesn't crash as much as my S8. Sometimes the S8 would just kind of freeze up a little bit and then all the apps would reboot and it would be all right again. But then what do you expect? It's a three-year-old phone. You know, these things are gonna start to happen. One usability aspect that the S8 definitely wins on is the fingerprint scanner. This one on the back here, which I really got used to having on the back, I won't lie, uh, is actually super well placed. The, the fingerprint scanner is really, really reliable. On the S20, you've got a fingerprint scanner under the glass, and I find it's not as reliable. Um, I'll often try to scan my finger and it'll work better on another finger or something like that. Samsung only lets you put three fingerprints on now, so it's a bit of a limitation. Also, a couple of times I've gone to plug in headphones, uh, like wired headphones, into my phone without really thinking, and then been like, oh, yeah, I forgot, it doesn't have a headphone jack anymore. Okay, on to battery life. So the S20 FE has a 4,500 milliamp hour battery versus the 3,000 milliamp hour battery life on the S8. So it's got half as much again, right? So it must be really good. Well, I think really I should just say don't expect any massive difference in battery life. Um, yes, this one's bigger, but it's got the higher refresh rate. It's not really a fair comparison anyway because the S20, sorry, the S8 is a a two-year-old phone at this point, so it's had way more charge cycles. The fact that it's even still a one-day phone is, is pretty good. So yeah, I think what's really important to note is that nowadays fast charging has become such a thing that you can just plug your phone in 20 minutes later, you've got, you know, 50% battery. So it's just different nowadays. So final notes, just to wrap everything up and make some conclusions. When you get the S20 FE, if you're into a higher refresh rate screen, which I am, it's a big deal. The apps and everything load significantly faster, which is also important to me. Don't expect a huge difference in the battery life, and you will take better quality photos, especially in the low light where it really excels. That's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed and found this video useful. Don't forget to leave it a like if you did, and I'll catch you in the next one.